All right, we got another video here talking about the uh, longitudinal view of the spinal cord. This is a pretty freaky model um, for some people because they don't really realize exactly what it is that they're looking at. But in this particular model, and let's zoom out just for a second, what you actually have here is you're seeing where they took the, they took the body, there's the pelvis, and if you look closely, I'll get the laser pointer back out here just for a moment. You can see the acetabulum, which is located on both sides. That's where uh, the head of your femur bones articulate with your pelvis. You can see the cossex down here. And if you move up, there's the rest of the pelvis. Um, as a matter of fact, there's your psoas major and you move on up and you can see what they've done they've actually cut away the ribs and they've actually cut away the front of your vertebrae so that you can see the spinal cord passing through your vertebrae on up through your neck and into uh, your skull where the spinal cord actually articulates with your medulla oblongata uh, so let's zoom in here for a moment with some of the few things that we do need to know And if you look very closely, you'll see some strange little pink structures located here. These are known as cervical ganglia. And uh, the cervical ganglia, of course, are the little pink things that you're looking at. And cervical ganglia are, of course, the uh, groups of cell bodies located outside the central nervous system. Well, if I zoom back out just a little bit, you'll see a small meshwork of white structures located there that is your cervical plexus remember a plexus is a network so the cervical plexus is a network of small nerves that are branching out at the neck as a matter of fact you can see the uh, anterior and middle uh, um, muscles that are located there in the neck uh, you can the, the anterior and middle scalenes that was escaping my mind there for a second sorry about that and then also we can see the phrenic nerve who um, the phrenic nerve happens to be the nerve that is responsible for innervating your diaphragm also made famous back in the day from your Tex Avery cartoons where alcohol comes into contact with this and causes you to hiccup craziness I know but whatever so we also see off to the side on both that side on the right side of that model and the left side and I know what you're thinking he doesn't know his left from right but remember it's always the left and the right of the patient not you so this would be the patient's left and that would be the patient's right and those weird springs that you see sticking out over there those happen to be the brachial plexus and the brachial plexus is a network of nerves that are running through the shoulder towards the arms Sometimes um, when a baby is born, their shoulders are folded inward as they're passing through the birthing canal, uh, causing the brachial plexus to become a bit pinched. And it can cause numbness and um, a lack of movement or feeling in the baby's hands. So when the baby's born, if they notice that the baby's not really moving their hands much, uh, you might see the nurses rubbing their shoulders and massaging their arms to get uh, blood flow into the arms and everything to get that feeling back. So anyway, if we zoom in just a little bit more, nope, that's zooming out, let's zoom in. We can follow the spinal cord on down and we'll also notice some weird little white things sticking out in between the ribs. What's funny is that these little white things sticking out in between the ribs happen to be intercostal nerves. And lo and behold, the intercostal nerves are innervating our intercostal muscles, both external and internal, which help us breathe. And if we zoom in even more, we'll see these strange little pink structures that are running down like a chain. These are known as sympathetic ganglia. And when they're interconnected with one another, they are called the, inter they are called the sympathetic trunk. And these sympathetic trunk ganglia 
are part of your sympathetic nervous system. Now, if we look back over here at the spinal cord, we'll see that the spinal cord suddenly ends. It doesn't make it all the way down to the pelvis. It cuts short and it has this strange cone-shaped area. This cone-shaped area here is known as the conus medullaris. Conus meaning cone shape. And so the spinal cord ends, but its nerves certainly don't end. The nerves continue to run all the way down to the end of the pelvis. And because they're such a large bunch and they have such a strange look to them, they decided to call, call this large bundle of nerves the cauda equina. Uh, cauda means tail, equina means equine, so because they said it looked like a horse's tail. And if you zoom out a bit, you can see where it looks like a horse's tail. Now, if we continue on over, we'll see this huge network of nerves uh, here in the lower back in the lumbar region. And that network of nerves in the lumbar region is actually known as the lumbar plexus. But um, we don't want to highlight too many different things. There's just three things I wanted to take the time to point out before my time runs out. And, and one of those things happens to be the femoral nerve, which is the very large nerve that you can see right here. That is the femoral nerve that is passing on down to the lower leg. The second thing that I wanted to point out to you is your fourth and last plexus that we wanted to mention, which is the sacral plexus, which is located on both sides here, which looks like a giant comb. And then last but not least, the infamous sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve can be seen on this side as well as this side. Remember that your sciatic nerve passes through the greater sciatic notch. And that's a wrap.